Hi, I'm Nathan, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the CNC. Now, before we start anything, I just want to make sure that you know which part of it that you want to use. So there are two ways to use the CNC mill, because there is a four axis unit and a three axis. For those of you who are coming in and just wanting to do some sort of object where you can use the spinning rotation of the fourth axis and carve out one of these circular tubes, you don't have to worry about anything. You can skip ahead until where we're actually turning on the unit. But for those of you who might be bringing your own pieces of flat wood, what you're going to need to do is replace the four axis unit we have in here with this flat bed that's for only three axis pieces, which would be like engraving on a flat piece. Now for those of you who want to do that, just ask 3D's lab staff and they'll be able to help you switch them out. But if you don't need that, don't worry about it. So when we start, what we're going to need to do is go ahead and turn on the machine. Now before we do that, you have to make sure that this lid is closed. Otherwise, it's not going to be able to do anything because whenever it's moving around, it automatically will lock down if you don't have the window closed. So what we're going to do is flip it on here in the back, and there's a power switch right here. So here you'll see power. Once you flip the switch on the back, you'll see a blue light come on right on that spot. Once that blue light has come on, you know the machine has power. Now to fully activate it, what you have to do is hold down this green button until these two lights start flashing blue. And there we are. So these will keep flashing blue until it has completed its initialization process inside the machine. Now that the machine is on, we can go ahead and set a couple things up inside of it. In order to do that, you need to turn a program on on the computer called vPanel, and we'll show you that, this right now. Alright, now we're going to move to the part on the computer. Now before you can do anything on here, you have to make sure that it's logged in to the Wayne39 account. If it's not logged in, you'll know because you won't see these two icons here in the middle of the page. Now, what if it's not logged on to the Wayne39 account already, have either a 3D lab staff or someone over in Tech Services come over and log it on for you. Once you have it logged on to Wayne39, you will have these two icons here. Double click on the top one called vPanel, and this window should pop up. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and install your detection pin and the detection jig. You'll know that it's not calibrated yet because if you look down here at this box there's only a white circle here. You want to click on detect jig and this will pop up, prompting you to put in the detection pin and the detection bar. Go ahead and ensure that those two are properly installed before you start this process. Now that we have vPanel open, what we're going to do is go ahead and have everything set up. So. In order to get it in the position we need, we want to hold down the view button. While it's blinking, the entire thing will be moving forward. Again, you have to have the cover closed in order for this to work. If you have the cover open, it will lock everything down. If that happens, all you need to do is twist this switch and pull out. And then once you do that, everything will be able to start again. So now that the bed is pulled forward, we can go ahead and open the cover. With the cover open, we have to put and install a couple of different things in here. All of which can be found in this white basket. What you will find is the detection bar and the detection pin. We will need these in order to set up and calibrate the machine. First, we'll put the detection bar in. The way we do that is if you come over here, there's a knob on top of the four axis maneuver what you can do is twist that and it'll pinch it down on top of the bar. You continue twisting it until it's completely pinched the bar in place. Now after you've done this, the bar should be able to sit and float in the air. But before we do anything else, we need to slide the, the right side into place as well. There's a little black lever here that when you spin it, will loosen the jig. What you can do then is go ahead and slide it up against. There's a small divot in the end of the detection bar that the point of this end of the jig will fit into. Now that that's in place, all we need to do is go ahead and lock the end of the jig in place by spinning this clockwise. With the detection bar in place, now we need to install the detection pin. The way we do that is by removing the previous drill bit with these two wrenches. 
And we're probably going to need a close up on this in order to do this. So, so what we're going to need now to put in is the detection pin and the collet to go with it. You'll know it's the right collet because it fits perfectly right over the end of the detection pin. In order to put this in, you're going to need the two wrenches out of the basket. So using the wrenches, what we're going to do is put the larger wrench on the top and put it over top and slide it into place. Then you're going to take the smaller wrench and put it just underneath up against the smaller side. What this will do is allow you to unpinch the drill bit and have it fall out. Once you have the two wrenches in place, push them apart from each other. And the drill bit should fall out. With this out, you can also unscrew the collet for the drill bit. Now we're going to take the new collet for the detection pin and screw it into place. Turning it counterclockwise tightens it. With that in place, now grab the detection pin with the two wrenches you will need. Grab the detection pin and slide it into the collet. With that tight in place, hold it in place with your finger while using the two wrenches to tighten it. Once you have the two wrenches in place, squeeze them toward each other to tighten the collet in place. Make sure the detection pin isn't loose and that it will stay where it's at. Now that you know that you have the detection pin and detection bar installed properly, go ahead and click on Start Sensing. It's going to come up with this window prompting you to remove the cuttings from the tool head. You don't need to worry about that because nothing has been cut on it since you started, so you can just go ahead and click continue. Once you click on that, the process will start. Go ahead and let this run. Now that the detection process has finished, what you want to do is replace the detection bar with the piece of wood you're going to use. So in this case, hit view so that it moves forward as we did earlier. Wait until it stops moving, and once it stops, go ahead and open the front cover. With the front cover open, go ahead and remove the detection bar. Do this by first sliding the, the jig on the right side off to the side. Do this by loosening it with the black bar counterclockwise, and then sliding it to the right. Once that is off, go ahead and loosen the detection bar. With that loose, go ahead and pull it out and put your piece of wood in. If your piece of wood is larger than what it was, just loosen the jigs so that it's able to hold the wood. With the jig loose enough now, we can put the piece of wood inside. Now just tighten it so that the wood piece is held in place. Now pull the detection jig part on the right side over to meet the piece of wood. Now you might notice that the middle of the jig is not centered with the piece of wood. Go ahead and move the piece of wood around until the point on the right side of the jig is centered with the piece of wood. Once the detection jig is centered on the piece of wood, go ahead and tighten it. In order to firmly press the point of the detection jig into the piece of wood, you need to spin the dial on the right side so that it pushes the point into the wood. Spin the dial away from yourself to push it into the wood. After you've given it a few turns, it should be all right. Go ahead and close the front cover. Now 
Once the process has finished, you will have this window popping up saying that the detection operation has finished. Once that shows up, go ahead and click OK and close. Now you will see down here on the square block that there's a yellow spot here, indicating that it has been calibrated. Now that you have it calibrated, what you can go ahead and do is set two things. First of all, what you want to do is click on Set XZ Origin at the center of orientation. You do that by clicking this button here and going over and selecting Apply. It will prompt you again to remove cuttings from the tool, which you don't need to worry about. So you can go ahead and click Continue. Now this process will run, and then you'll be able to continue after it's finished. Once you have your piece loaded in and all centered, go ahead and select the button next to Set here at the top. What you want to make sure you have is X Origin selected. Now, you don't want to click Apply yet because first you have to move the actual tool head to the far right side of your piece. The way you do that is by clicking on this right red arrow. When you click on this, you'll notice that inside the machine, the tool head is actually sliding to the right. You can control how fast it goes by selecting either a high speed, a low speed, or even just the number of steps that it will move, which is just more of a coordinate based movement system. If it needs to move forwards or backwards, you can use the green arrows, or you can just move it diagonally. And if you also need to move it up and down, you can use the blue buttons. If you need to spin the chassis that your piece is loaded into for any reason, go ahead and once you have moved your tool head to the far right side of your piece, which we can go ahead and make sure is squared up, what you want to do is go ahead and move down and click on this button here that says apply. Make sure that you have the X origin selected. This will set the right side of your piece as the X origin. Now that you have that selected, we can go ahead and close out a V panel and go to the next part.